Who's your mommy? Warner Animation is a bit all over the place when it comes to their movies. There are the dystopian themes of the Lego movie, all the innuendos crammed into Scooby-Doo, Space Jam, Psyoping, an entire generation into being attracted to Lola Bunny. There are lots of jokes that flew right over your head as a kid. I'm Keefe Nosey with Wicked Binge, and these are Warner Animated Movies adult jokes, cleanest to dirtiest. Let's start this off at the beginning with perhaps the studio's most iconic movie, for better or for worse, Space Jam! From commercial beginnings, did you know that Space Jam was actually not the first time Bugs Bunny and Michael Jordan collaborated? That's right, a legitimate Nike commercial in the 90s featured the two going up against some basketball bullies and absolutely crushing them. Who knew at the time Bugs would actually be right about this being the start of a beautiful friendship? This could be the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Self-promotion, sort of. There are several nods throughout the film to the movie's producer Ivan Reitman and are as blatant as Bugs saying his connection to Bill Murray is the reason the latter got cast for the film. How did you get here? Any Anyway. Producers a friend of mine, just had a team should come and drop me off. Honestly, the only dirty thing about this is that shameless self-promotion. 2001's Space Jam Odyssey. In this shot of Danny DeVito's evil planet Moron Mountain, there's a brief reference to the monolith from the 1968 film 2001 A Space Odyssey. Jerry Krause, certified supervillain. Recently, the docuseries The Last Dance has raised speculation amongst NBA and Space Jam fans alike that Swackhammer, Danny DeVito's villainous role in this movie, was based on the Chicago Bulls' coach Jerry Krause, whom Jordan was known to butt heads with often. Even if this is true, hey, at least you gotta be played by Danny DeVito. I'm jealous, personally. Union rights. Space Jam has a surprising amount of references to workers' rights, from Daffy calling a union meeting, to him and Bugs lamenting that Jordan makes no money off of the sales of his merchandise. Mugs and t-shirts and lunchboxes with our pictures on them. Ever see any money from all that stuff? <laughs> Not a thing. White guys can't dunk. When Michael Jordan tells Bill Murray that he probably can't play in the NBA, the latter's immediate reaction is to ask if it's because he's white. No, oh, Larry's white. So what? Larry's not white. Larry's clear. Well, maybe the next Space Jam will take place on a hockey rink. But first, a word from our sponsors. Wait, no, don't click off, it's just a joke from the movie. In one scene, Michael Jordan's picked up by Stan Podolak, who, in just one sentence, ties all of Jordan's sponsors into the movie. Come on, Michael, it's game time. Get your Hanes on, lace up your Nikes, grab your Wheaties and your- Sponsors game. aside, is it really a good idea to have a Big Mac before an athletic activity? Secret steroids. When it's time for Bugs Bunny to get his teammates pumped up, he uses a little placebo effect to convince them that their water is full of steroids, calling it- Stuff. Even Daffy's hesitant to pull out his dinner Lance Armstrong, saying it goes against everything they learned in health class. You know, this goes against everything they taught me in health class. Smoking a trombone. One of the Toon Squad's basketball rivals is seen smoking out of a trombone. Wait, why do they feel the need to make it a trombone? Kids know what cigarettes are, unless that's not tobacco in there. Bugs roasting the audience. In one scene, Bugs breaks the fourth wall by telling Michael Jordan about Swackhammer's plan to kidnap the Looney Tunes, horrified at the concept of performing for a bunch of his words. Lowbrow, bug eyed, fat headed, humor challenged aliens! Wait, if we're humor challenged and we're laughing at you, then what does that say about you, Bugs? Hmm. We've got balls. We've got balls. I know you get this one, so moving on. Charles Barkley's prayer. Back in the 90s, rumors spread about Charles Barkley having an affair with Madonna, despite being a married man. Thankfully, he was able to poke some fun at the gossip. In one scene, he prays for success in a church and promises in return that he'll never date Madonna again. I'll never go out with Madonna again. A Pulp Fiction reference? Of all the movies to reference in a crossover between Bugs Bunny and the NBA, R-rated film Pulp Fiction wasn't at the top of anyone's list of expectations, I think. But in any case, when Yosemite Sam and Elmer Fudd show up in black suits to take care of one of the monsters, we find out that they take the game very seriously. Wrong kind of branding. Daffy apparently has been literally branded by Warner Bros. Entertainment. If that weren't odd enough, the branding in question is on his butt. <laughs> This raises many questions, but perhaps most notably, how does he use the bathroom? Is it a breach of contract for that mark to touch a toilet seat? Something weird. In one scene, Danny DeVito, I mean, Swackhammer's minions are stacked atop each other in a trench coat. Due to their squirming, a woman comments that the guy next to her is doing something weird in his trench coat. Keep it in your pants, guys. All, however many of you there are. Patrick Ewing's skills. This famous basketball star ends up visiting a doctor for consultation after losing his basketball skills. Promptly, the doctor covers his bases by asking if there are any other areas he's unable to perform. No. Hey, at least he didn't ask for an examination. Lola Bunny. Just Lola Bunny. You wanna play a little one-on-one, -on -one, dog? Dog? It's telling that in a movie about Michael Jordan playing basketball with an animated rabbit, the most memorable aspect is still this weirdly sexualized rabbit woman. Oh, who 
if you're doubtful of this thing being intentional, let me call your attention to Bugs getting a full body erection upon seeing her. Down hair horrendous. Oh, one could argue the amount of inappropriate X-rated fan art this one character is responsible for should be classified as an act of terrorism. Now everybody get ready to take a trip through the human body next is Osmosis Jones. The New York Buffalo Wing Festival, Origins. Ironically, despite the movie being about treating your body better, at least to some extent, one New York entrepreneur saw it and was more impacted by a throwaway line from Frank about a chicken wing festival. The Buffalo Wing Festival this weekend. Thus, the New York Buffalo Wing Festival was born, and it's still going strong today. Completely unexplained Pikachu cameo. Yeah, the entry name says it all. One of the many germs inside Frank's body is seen holding a Pikachu plush. Either Frank must have eaten too many Pikachu fruit snacks or something, or... Pokemon is hugely popular with single cellular organisms. Very random. DNA Boy Magazine. In one blink and you miss it shot, there's a character reading a magazine that looks similar to the infamous Playboy, except it has strands of DNA instead of naked ladies. We're not sure about the ethics of that in this universe. There we go again. But we're sure that it's best to just not think too hard about them. Godfather parody. Whether you care for the Godfather or not, Osmosis Jones has a parody of it featuring the villain Thrax in Frank's armpit. Did the foot fungus pay up yet? Nah. There's not gonna be a time to say this that's better than any other, so man, this movie is weird. Thrax is unironically terrifying. Named after a rare but deadly disease called anthrax, Thrax is probably one of the most morbid villains to ever appear in a kid's film. Whew. This cat was sick before I even got here. Being a virus, his only goal is to destroy his host's body from the inside, and once he does, he keeps a single chromosome of his departed victims. That's a horror villain motivation right there, man. Literal founding father. In this scene, a statue reading Our Founder can be seen, the statue in question being of a sperm cell. It's a pretty bold joke that doubles as something technically educational. We applaud you, random statue. Gonad's gym label. On Drix's gym bag, we see a label that says Gonad's gym. Gonads, if you don't know, are the primary reproductive organs in the human body. While the label is seen in the movie, the gym scene itself was cut for the sake of keeping things family friendly. There are a couple other things that should have been cut by that logic, but <laughs> sure. Tom Kolenik's campaign ad. Tom spins a boy's head around 180 degrees in one of his ads. This might seem like just fun reference to The Exorcist, but later on, we see this same boy in a neck brace. Meaning this JFK clone just casually snapped a child's neck to build his campaign. Gotta love some subtle dark humor. Nightmare Theater. Frank's subconscious is portrayed as a movie theater with a variety of nightmares to play for him. The most notorious is called Your Worst Nightmare, which portrays his young daughter Shane in a wedding dress next to his slob of a co-worker, Bob. What? We'll give that movie some points for honesty. It's definitely gonna live up to its name. Not Bob, gross. That if anything ever happens to you, I will take care of her. Okay. Uvula joke. The words uvula and vulva are easy to mix up. What the heck is a uvula? It's that little dangly thing that hangs down in Frank's boxy shop. But the description of dangly thing makes Ozzy mistake it for another dangly thing on Frank's body. The chicks line up to divide with me. Osmosis Jones bragging about how every girl wants to divide with him is the equivalent of a guy bragging about how much he gets laid. Likewise, a girl telling him that he seems like the type who divides with himself is clearly referring to masturbation. Because to me, you look like the kind of cell who mostly divides with himself. Brutal. Scientifically accurate, but brutal. You say what's mandatory? When Ozzy and Drix show up to the zit, a performance from Kidney Rock, a pun on Kid Rock, is performing Cool Daddy Cool. One of the lyrics in the song, although not blatant in the movie itself, is literally, Young ladies, young ladies, I like them underage, see? You say that's statutory, but I say it's mandatory. I felt kind of uneasy even reading that. Never quote that I even said that. Be on the lookout for Osmosis Jones 2, where Kidney Rock collabs with Herbert the Pervert, hopefully from prison. Next, let's walk a little closer to the live action end of the spectrum to talk about the cinematic masterpiece, Scooby-Doo. 2002. Would you do it for a doobie snack? In one scene, Shaggy and Scooby are having a real chill time in the mystery machine. Smoke coming out and all. Yeah, just another beautiful day in paradise. If it's not a clear enough stoner reference, they start playing Pass the Duchy during the scene. You know, the, the one that was in Stranger Things. Yeah, that one. Talk about toasting. <laughs> Shaggy's relationship to Mary Jane. The Shaggy stoner references continue with his interest in a girl named Mary Jane. Like, that is my favorite name. Really? Yeah. A street name for marijuana. Beans? Staying on the theme of mysteries, one of the most compelling in this movie is Fred suggesting that there was a time when Scooby... Doesn't you decide to clean your beans at Don Notch's Christmas party? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are really only so many things that could be referring to. Where Shaggy and Scooby don't go, there are five words to deter Shaggy and Scooby from visiting a place. Haunted, spooky, creepy, forbidden, or... 
Well, hydrochronic. Right, or hydroclonic, but that's for a whole different reason, man. Not familiar with one of those words, huh? Well, spooky basically means a little bit scary. And oh, but you mean hy hydroclonic. It's ba basically, it's a term for shooting water into your rectum for cleansing. The only question now is why Scooby and Shaggy seem to have shared trauma involving this. Mr. Mononucleosis. In one scene, Fred butchers Mr. Mondavarius' name as nope. Mr. Mononucleosis. K.A. Mono, the kissing disease. Fred's a, a bit too excited. Fred ends up getting very excited when he swaps bodies with Daphne and realizes he can look at himself naked. I can look at myself naked. It's surprisingly blatant. He even starts feeling her, I mean, his chest later on. Looks like he's found a new kind of mystery to solve, his own sexuality. Hey, good looking. Just Daphne. If being groped by Fred while he was in her body somehow weren't enough, Daphne later gets filled up by a ghost for supposedly an hour and a half. Me for an hour and a half. Someone give her a hug. A consensual one. Thank you. Eyes up here, seat neighbor. Can this movie's cast go five seconds without ogling Daphne? On the plane, the guy sitting next to her is looking at her magazine rack. Emphasis on rack. What a gentleman. When Velma accuses Fred of only caring about women for their bodies. I'm a man of substance. Dorky chicks like you turn me on too. And yes, he does word it like that. Coming soon to a bookstore near you. Don't miss Fred's generation defining work of art. Fred on Fred? The many faces of me. And no, it's not a weirdly premise adult video. At least I <laughs> definitely hope it isn't. I don't have the what? Let's take a moment to reminisce on the fact that this movie has Scrappy Doo say the phrase, You don't have the scrot for this job, Pally! Scrot being short for scrotum, which is a scientific term for. <laughs> you get it. Scrappy Doo's villain arc. Towards the end of the film, when Scrappy Doo's taken off to jail, his last words to the gang are cut short before he can call them sons of B words. If not for your meddling sons of. Language, Fred. In one scene, Fred pulls a Jesse Pinkman and says, Yo, yo, the Biatch was like, what? And I was like, later on. How this movie kept the PG rating is, is beyond me. The team is like a banana split. Shaggy offers some kind encouragement by comparing the mystery gang to a banana split. Fred, you're the big banana. He seems very sure of that too. Shaggy's French lesson. While bonding with Mary Jane, the girl, not the herb, Shaggy reveals that Fred once tried to get him to learn French. The one phrase he recites, hey, You don't need to know what voulez-vous coucher avec moi me? means, do you want to sleep with me? Nobody's ever given me a stuff dismembered head before. Scrappy's puppy power. Before being reasonably kicked out of the group, Scrappy threatens to give the ghosts a taste of his puppy power right before he pees on Daphne. Ta-da! Oh god! When called out, he seems disturbingly proud of what he's done. Deleted scenes. Yeah, that's right. With all the adult content they crammed into the movie, there was still some that got left out, including, but not limited to. I'm not like that anymore. I've transformed my body into a dangerous weapon. An implied drug deal between a park goer and the voodoo maestro. A line from Daphne implying that she faked having a good time during sex with Fred. There was apparently a kissing scene between Daphne and Velma? <laughs> or at least some implied attraction there. And of course, Velma's several cut scenes. Cool. <laughs> and you've always been a chick. The fact that Parent Screenings got several scenes involving Velma cut from her singing on a piano as though she were intoxicated, though she was not, to her dancing in a bikini in a locker room while possessed by a demon <clears throat> is certainly something. I'm just getting my swerve on. Though it must have been a good ego boost for Linda Cardellini to know that she was so hot she almost single-handedly raised the age rating. They say The Godfather Part 2 was the greatest movie sequel, but we say Scooby-Doo 2 Monsters Unleashed. Daphne Tattoos. Two guys ended up getting Daphne tattoos on their chests to show their love for her. And you know what? Weird though it may be, this is still probably the most respectful way any male admirer has treated her in these movies so far. So good for you guys. Terrible life decision, but good job. Right on, Shaggy bro. In the same scene, Shaggy smells his beloved Mary Jane, it actually is the herb this time, and approaches a group of stoners to greet them. Always good to have a solid bond with your fans, right? Even if it's over light drugs. That's my purse, I don't know you. When Velma kicks a metal suit of armor in the groin, we learn a new thing about its slang. Apparently, round tables is their word for testicles. Right in the round tables. Now you know. Who's your mommy? Apparently, the studio took the last movie's parental notes of Velma is too hot, threw them in the trash, and made a whole subplot out of her giving herself a glow up and calling herself mommy. Who's your mommy? I can't believe Scooby-Doo 2 is so many people's sexual awakening. I mean, I can believe it, but like, that, that, that just doesn't feel like a sentence we should be able to say. Shaggy's reflection. And finally, in one scene, Shaggy defies all logic by becoming even more gorgeous. Hello, 
case. Just look at that hourglass figure. It would be so awesome. It would be so cool if we moved on to the next entry. Teen Titans, go! To the movies. Slade, not Deadpool. The Titans end up mistaking Slade for Deadpool in one scene. I thought Deadpool was a good guy. Much like many of the very young audience members probably did too. Where do babies come from? Before the end of the movie, Robin directly tells the audience of mostly children and their parents, Wait! wait, wait, wait. Kids, ask your parents where babies come from! Honestly, the absolute savagery this show could go to is it's kind of admirable a little bit. Titans, go! Away from the crime scene! After being encouraged by a guy's upbeat, inspirational song about life, the Titans end up hitting him with a truck and promptly freeing the crime scene out of fear that his dad is a cop. I think his dad is a cop! Run! That's not very heroic. Resetting the timelines. The Titans end up having to reset the timeline for multiple superhero origin stories, including Batman's, whose parents get shoved into an alley so that Bruce Wayne can witness them be brutally murdered firsthand. You know what I'm gonna say, this show was funny. Not saying it's good, it's not good, but it's funny, sometimes. Let's finish this movie. But there's no time for wondering about that now. Let's move on to the next piece of the set, the Lego Movie. A surprisingly dark ride. The Lego Movie is one of the most acclaimed kids' movies in recent years, in no small part due to the fact that even adults can enjoy the themes of brainwashing, parental neglect, and a 1984-esque totalitarian dystopia. Let's take extra care to follow the instructions or you'll be put to sleep and If George Orwell just designed Lego sets instead of writing books, we all would have figured it out sooner. Honey, where are everyone's pants? For a kid's film, there's a lot of Lego nudity to be seen here. Nudity. We see half of Emmett's nude body in the shower, and everyone's favorite show is a sitcom called Honey, where am I? Total jab at sitcoms. Speaking of which, that very show might be a reference to sitcoms that have gone on too long in general. Wildstyle remarks that after so many seasons, you'd think he would have found his pants by now. Found your pants. Series is over. It raises questions about why other series needed to last so long. Why did it take so long to learn how he met his mother? How full will the house get? I is Malcolm ever going to get out of the middle? <laughs> These be the laws of the sea. Of all Metalbeard's weirdly specific pirate rules, the number one rule is to never put your butt on another pirate's face. Follow the instructions. <sighs> Apparently this was enough of an ongoing issue to make it not just a posted rule, but the most important one. Just convulsing around. In one scene, good cop, bad cop claims he has video evidence of Emmett convulsing with what he believes to be a strange Lego piece. And why is it permanently stuck to your back? The fact that it's shaped like that is attached to his butt and his absolute horror upon witnessing said video is, of course, entirely coincidental. Of course, buddy, I believe you agree. From one Lego movie to another, next up is the Lego Batman movie, raging at one million percent. Saying that your rage is always operating at one million percent already sounds edgy and weird enough as it is. I don't feel anything emotionally except for rage. 24-7, 365, and a million percent. Add to it the fact that you're wearing a bathrobe and thrusting your hips as you say it, and well, now it's just weird. Go home, Alfred, you're drunk. When Alfred tries in vain to give Batman some solid emotional life advice, Batman scolds him for watching too many Lifetime movies and drinking too much Chardonnay. Alfred's only grievance with this it's Pinot Grigio, so whatever it is, meaning Alfred canonically enjoys both alcohol and Lifetime movies. Hey, to each their own. What do you mean it's a bad idea? Batman ends up roasting the Suicide Squad by commenting on how dumb the notion of gathering criminals to fight criminals is. What am I gonna do, get a bunch of criminals? together to fight the criminals that's a stupid idea but but the but the buff shark guy the rat girl uh, margot robbie come on man have an eye for the arts batman more like pig man in one scene batman tells the joker he likes to fight around and given joker's heartbroken reaction it's likely a play on the term sleep around a term usually referring to sleeping with multiple partners i am fighting a few different people what batman your heart is just as black as your cape I like to fight around. Mass murder and torture is one thing, well, it's two things, but cheating on your arch nemesis? For shame. Kids can be cruel, Robin. When Richard Grayson introduces himself to Bruce Wayne, he tells him how the- But all the kids in the orphanage call me dick. Well, children can be cruel. Yeah. <laughs> Bruce offers his understanding of how cruel children can be sometimes, clearly thinking the nickname has a double meaning. To the Wayne car! Batman's license plate reads Wayne Carr, obviously a nod to his name Bruce Wayne, but it also sounds similar to the word wanker, meaning Batman is basically calling himself a British guy who masturbates a lot. And surely you didn't think we were done with the Lego, right? Now we're gonna take a quick trip to the Lego Ninjago movie. Lord Garmadon's dupla arm trick. Lord Garmadon shows the ninjas his favorite trick with having extra arms. With four arms rubbing his back, he can make it look like he's making out with two people at the same time. Weird, I, I didn't know he had a mouth on his crotch. Oh, oh. 
Okay, we swear, this is the last Lego movie we're talking about for this video. The Lego Movie 2, the second part. Pop culture references. While the sequel doesn't have as much adult-oriented humor as the original, there are some cheeky Easter eggs that fans of all ages should be able to get a chuckle out of. It's the portal to dimensions unknown. Emmett buckles up his friend Planty, a reference to Star-Lord telling Groot to buckle up in the hit movie also starring Chris Pratt, Guardians of the Galaxy. There's also the amount of Mad Max references, like Wild Styles' yellow and black hands, a bunch of raptors in the background shots doing random things, and even a cameo of Lex Luthor coming to you live with Kidney Rock from prison. Let's pay one last visit to the Mystery Gang for Scoob. Dropping F-bombs. Shaggy and the Blue Falcon are in a bind, so naturally Shaggy suggests the latter drop some of his patented Falcon bombs. F-bombs away! Not sure if you'd be able to keep the PG rating with weaponry like that, Shaggy. I'm telling Mommy Velma. Now we're heading back to where it all started with one of the world's longest awaited sequels, Space Jam 2 A New Legacy. Even more Easter eggs. In the background shots of this film, there are some characters that kids should recognize. Icons like the Flintstones, Yogi Bear, the Jetsons, and even the Joker should be easy for anyone to point out. Others are a bit more obscure though, like the Great Kazoo, the Herculoids, Space Ghost, and Peter Potamus. There's actually a crazy amount of retro cartoon cameos in the background shots of this movie. It's worth checking out at least. Bugs Bunny for the Game Boy. In one flashback, we see LeBron playing a video game before his basketball career would eventually kick off. That game? Bugs Bunny Crazy Castle for the Game Boy. Wonder if that one's any good. Any AVGN-esque YouTubers who can answer that one for us? Well, in any case, it's finally time for the last movie on our list, DC League of Super Pets. Comic Geek Heaven. Despite the kitty vibes of the movie, comic book fans are gonna enjoy all the nods to more undersung DC properties. For example, Jonah Hex apparently owns a Texas steakhouse. We'd definitely love to visit, as a side note. Hawkman has his own brand of popcorn, Superman is shown to have Black Canary's album, and there's apparently a raccoon version of Green Lantern, which begs the question, are there animal versions of other fictitious heroes? Is there a Spider-Man somewhere who's just a regular spider? The world may never know. I know some of you probably just know the answer to that. That's all, folks. Lee, that's my line. 